Hello everybody, in this video we're going to take a look at my most recent purchase. This is the Tech Hoyer Echo Racer Calibre 5. It's with the reference number WAY2112BA0928. If I'm not mistaken, this model is released in the year 2014. There is a much newer version that is released in 2017. That is with the reference number WBD2112. And the new version comes with the magnifier and it has bigger loom, I think, and the hands are a little bit bolder. But I prefer the look on this older version. Uh, both of these are still available in the store and they are retailing for the same price. The Tag Hoyer brand is nothing short of a controversial band. They are among in the watch collectors who hated it due to its marketing campaign and some even claim that uh, their watches are overpriced and there are some arguments that they are using like inferior materials for example like plastic retainering for the movement in their piece as a cost cutting measure. I will try to go into that a little bit down in the video later on but uh, I think Tech Hoyer has been very successful in their marketing campaign because uh, if you were to ask any non-watch guy about the brand Tech Hoyer and compare it to say a brand of the same level such as Auris, most of them would recognize the brand Tech Hoyer rather than Auris. That goes to show how much Tech Hoyer has been successful in their marketing campaign. All right, let's get straight into the dimensions of the watch. The watch has a case diameter of 41.5 millimeters. It has a lug to lug of about 47 millimeters. Thickness is about 12 millimeters and it has a lug width of uh, 20 millimeters. The case is made of stainless steel and it has a brush finishing on the top. Okay. And it has high polish finishing on both sides. It comes with a screw in sign crown with the Tech Hoyer logo. And the bezel is what gives this Echo Racer its iconic look. The bezel is a full steel, stainless steel bezel. There is no insert being used here. And on the odd hours, there are these blocky protrusions that are, they are highly polished that, that represents, you know, the odd hours. And we have deep engravings for the numerals on the even hours. There is a loom pip at the 12 o'clock position and the bezel action is quite nice. It's very soft in a way that uh, you can turn it very easily because partly due to that, that, that blocky protrusions that, you know, provide a little bit more grip, but, but uh, there is some little back play, but you know, it's very nice. Not, not too bad. Well, as nice as it looks, uh, the bezel is not much of a use because uh, apart from the blocky protrusion and the engraved numbers, there is not much, uh, there is no minute trackers on the bezel. So let's say if you're going to try to time, uh, you know, some minutes, you won't be able to do that. Well, if you plan to go diving with this piece, uh, the bezel won't, won't be much of a use. But then again, who would go diving in a mechanical watch, you know, in this current time? Let's get into the face of the watch. Let me just try to, you know, turn on some light so that to get a better view of the face. Hopefully. Okay. So the dial is what I call a ship deck dial. It looks like, you know, a ship deck, you know, when you're standing on the ship on the floorboard, it looks like that. So it gives me the impression that it's a ship deck dial. I believe there are some who call it the same. This is another feature that I like the most on this piece other than the, the unique bezel. The markers are of like arrowhead markers on all the hours, but there is a tr large triangle at the 12 o'clock position and the 6 and 9 has a slightly bigger arrowhead markers. The hour and minute hands, they are of a sort like the design and they are filled with loom. All the markers and hands are filled with loom. The second hand has that same, uh, you know, arrowhead uh, tip. Uh, there is no mention on what kind of loom that is used, but uh, I think it's quite uh, nice. It's a greenish loom. Maybe I'll just turn off the light. I think you'll be able to see the loom by now. Yep, you can see that it's a greenish loom. 
Okay. Uh, the loom is okay. It lasts quite okay, and then it is quite bright in in certain light, especially not in this uh, broad daylight. But it's okay. It does a decent job. The logo is applied on this piece, and the word Echo Razor caliber five and three hundred meters water resistant. They are printed, and then it has mini trackers all around. There is a date window at the three o'clock position, and it's just framed by a printed. Uh, square frame and uh, then again the date wheel is white in color powering this piece is what tech hoyer calls the caliber 5 but it is in actual fact a Celita sw200 it beats at 28,800 beats per hour and has a power reserve of 38 hours there is no rated accuracy mentioned by tech hoyer but from what i've timed i got about plus 10.7 seconds per day in the course of two weeks well, that is not really impressive. I believe uh, Tech could do better by regulating their movement a little more because uh, I have watches at the lower price point that has better accuracy than this piece. And coming to the controversial part of this is that this piece actually has a plastic retainer ring for the movement. Okay, so there are many arguments that this is a cost cutting measure by Tech Hoyer to you know to save some cost but but if we take a look at the overall construction of this piece if you think about it the entire watch is made to a high quality finishing from the stainless steel use to the precision machining the sapphire crystal the solid end links and the solid links on all the bracelet what percentage would the retainering contribute to the entire cost of this piece i think it's very insignificant so why does Tech Hoyer scheme on such an insignificant piece, especially just a small retainer ring on such a huge watch to save some cost? I mean, it, it doesn't really make sense, right? It's not that I'm trying to defend uh, the brand Tech Hoyer, but I'm just trying to understand, uh, you know, that, that argument about cost saving and all that. And if you look at it, we are not talking about very mass or very mass produced pieces like you know for example a pen or a children's toy this is a time piece so i guess the volume won't be that much if you compare to like a pen or a toy so uh, that kind of insignificant amount wouldn't save a lot of uh, money for tech hoyer and coming from my knowledge in manufacturing for plastic piece you will need to invest on an injection molding tool you know to to, to inject the plastic so let's say if the volume is not high enough and if you try to amortize the cost to that small numbers i don't think a plastic retainer ring will be a lot more cheaper than say a stamped sheet metal ring so it comes back to uh, maybe some advantages of the plastic retainer ring i have to stress that i'm not trying to defend tech hoyer or you know to create any kind of argument here it's just that i'm trying to understand you know the reasoning or behind the usage of a plastic retainer ring and when i think about it uh, there are some few advantages of, of plastic retainer ring compared to say a stem uh, sheet metal ring uh, plastic is non-magnetic first of all and it's it's a lot more corrosion resistance compared to uh, even a stainless steel plastic in a way it's more flexible than metal and it's you know maybe it, it does help a bit in some shock resistance okay i'm not trying to sound like a, a tank hoyer fanboy here i'm not a fanboy i just love some of the uh, watches so yep so before i go in more i just stop here so this is the case back of the watch it is a solid screw down case back and just with the uh, lightly engraved diving helmet at the back I mean, it's not really very impressive, but it is there. You can see the Tech Hoyer logo, automatic, 300 meters. And Swiss made since 1860. Yes, the brand Hoyer does go, does go back a, a long way around you know, in history. The bracelet on this piece, in my opinion, is very nice. Uh, all the links are solid and they are attached to the watch body uh, with solid end links. Okay. It has brush top. And if you look at it, the center links just they protrudes a little bit out. That gives the bracelet a little more character. And the sides are highly polished. But unfortunately, the links are only held 
by regular push pin there is no screw or pin and collar system so yes one can argue that uh, you know for this price tag hoyer should actually include it like something like a screw in links and they do have a uh, half links provided as well full links and half links the clasp is a machine clasp is a solid mill clasp and it has a push button deployant buckle uh, the buckle here is brushed and I do feel that uh, it's a bit lackluster, you know, for Tank Hoyer just to print a small Tank Hoyer wording. I wish that they could at least include the Tank Hoyer logo, the shield logo. I think it would look much better. The bracelet also comes with a dive extension. It's just made of a stamp sheet metal, but it managed to serve its purpose well, I think. Alright, this is how the watch looks on my 6-inch wrist. In my opinion, it sits quite well and the size is not overpowering even for my small wrist because uh, I believe due to the short lug to lug and the fact that the lug has this uh, tapered cut off that makes it look like, you know, it conforms to my small wrist. And when this piece is on your wrist, you can definitely feel the heft. You can know that it's there. You can feel the presence. This is how the class looks. All right, with the reshot done, let's wrap up this video. I know that Tag Heuer is a brand that is bashed by most of the watch collectors or shall I call them watch knobs. So being in a hobby and that I like this piece, you know, I was like being in a pre precarious position. I suspect that when I got this piece, I would be bashed by some of the watch knobs, you know. At the end of the day, buy what you like, wear what you like. It's your money, it's your watch. So we don't have to bow down to those watch knobs. And to me, this piece is certainly a very nice piece. No complaint about it. Of course, there are some areas that could be improved, but I guess that's how it goes for all the timepieces out there, right? All right, so that's it for this video. I hope that I don't create, create much controversy here. And if you're new to this channel, please help me by subscribing to my channel. And please don't forget to follow me on my Instagram at gfw underscore watch for more watch pictures. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.